Hi, I'm Prof L. Welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to be talking about the single most important concept in all of chemistry, and that is the mole. Now there's plenty to say about the mole, and in fact there's too much to cram into one video, so this is going to be a two-parter. But uh, let's start off today by looking at these four substances that I have in front of me, okay? We've got water here, we've got copper, we've got aluminium, and we've got sulfur. They all look very, very different. What's the similarity between them? <laughs> well, <laughs> is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> hopefully not really. The similarity between these is the fact that each of these is a sample of one mole of the chemical substance. To discuss this, we really need to uh, go back to a previous video in which we introduced the idea of the atomic mass unit and the mass of a single atom. Talking about masses of single atoms is all very well and good if you're working on the very, 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 very small scale. But we chemists are not working on the very, very small scale. We're working on um, an everyday scale. This amount of water or this mass of copper or whatever. We're not talking about single individual atoms here. Let's start off then with the definition of the mole. And the mole is the amount of substance that contains the same number of specified entities as there are atoms in exactly 12 grams of the carbon isotope, carbon-12. Now, if that hasn't confused you already, <laughs> I don't really blame you. It's a long and involved definition. So let's, let's use an analogy to sort of hopefully uh, simplify that particular definition. Okay, let's say that we want 50,000 sheets of paper. So we go down to, um, you know, whoever sells paper these days, and you say, I'd like 50,000 sheets of paper, please. And so the person behind the desk says, certainly. And so it gets a big ream of paper and starts counting them off. One, two, three, four, five. Of course, that's not going to happen, is it? They're not going to count off 50,000 sheets of paper to sell you those. They're not going to do that. The way that they're going to do that is they are going to weigh one sheet of paper and then once they know the mass of that one sheet of paper, they're going to multiply that by 50,000, put a big old stack of papers on the balance and add or remove bits of paper until they get to the mass of 50,000 sheets of paper, okay? And that's kind of what we do with this thing called the mole. It's the same sort of thing. We know the mass of a single atom. We know what the mass of those are. They're around about 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, tiny, tiny, tiny. So knowing the mass of one atom allows us to determine the mass of any number of these atoms. What do we mean by any number? What's, what's this any number thing? Well, again, let's use an analogy. We go down to the store, what do we buy eggs in? We go down to the store and we buy a dozen eggs, don't we? What do we mean by a dozen? A dozen means 12. <laughs> In the olden days, we might have bought a gross of something, and a gross was equal to 144 of something, okay? Now, a mole is analogous to a dozen. It just signifies a particular number. Now, in the case of a dozen, that number is 12. In the case of a mole, that number is, wait for it, 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. <laughs> Where does that number come from? That number comes from the fact that there are that number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And that is sometimes called the Avogadro number or the Avogadro constant if we give it a unit, which is the unit of mole to the minus one. A mole of anything contains 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 of those things. That's what a mole is. We gave that sort of, that sort of convoluted 
definition of it previously, but we can simplify that. It just refers to a particular number of your specified entities. If you're talking about atoms or molecules or ions or whatever, it doesn't matter. So in other words, here's copper. Okay, this is a mole of copper. In here, I have 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 copper atoms. This is a mole of aluminium. I've got 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 aluminium atoms. A mole of sulfur, ditto. A mole of water, 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 water molecules in this case. Okay? So, in this case, this mole of water weighs 18.02 grams, give or take. This mole of copper weighs around about 63 and a half grams, give or take. This mole of aluminium weighs 27 grams. And this mole of sulfur weighs around about 32 grams. So if you think about it, what that is saying is that each of these specified entities, these individual atoms or molecules, must weigh a different mass. They must do, because in each of these, we've got the same number the same number of those specified entities, namely one mole of each of them. So that's a mole, and that's a mole, hopefully, as I can best explain it. It's a really, really, really important chemical concept, and it simply boils down to a particular number, okay? So that particular number being 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 per mole. 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 anythings in one mole of that anything. This and those samples that I showed you before lead to a really important concept. Big M, a thing called molar mass. Really, really important chemical concept. And hopefully, as the name suggests, that is equal to the mass of one mole of whatever substance it is that you're talking about, okay? So in those previous examples, I said that, for example, the mass of one mole of copper was 63.5 grams. So the molar mass of copper, roughly, is 63.5 grams for every mole. One mole of copper weighs 63 and a half grams. So therefore, the molar mass of copper, the mass of one mole, 63 and a half grams per mole, okay? The mass of aluminium, we said, was around about 27 grams, and that was one mole of aluminium, so therefore the molar mass of aluminium is 27 grams per mole. And again, sulfur was 32, water was around about 18. So what are we saying here? We're saying, right, if we have one mole of copper, the mass of 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms of copper is 63 and a half grams. With aluminium, the mass of 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of aluminium is 27 grams. It's the same thing. We're talking here about the same number of atoms. Those same number of atoms have different masses, so therefore, the mass of an individual copper atom is different from the mass of an individual aluminium atom. And we could say that one copper atom is gonna be heavier by a factor of roughly two and a bit than an um, aluminium atom, okay? Let's finish up by looking at this number here, 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. That's just a number, isn't it? It's an enormously big number. It's a massively, massively big number. Let's put that into context, okay? Here, I can hold 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms in my hand, quite easily. That's a mole of copper atoms. What about a mole of grains of sand, for example, okay? A mole of grains of sand, could I hold that in my hand? <laughs> Not easily, okay? So a mole of grains of sand would cover all of Australia and all of New Zealand to a depth of around about uh, a meter and a bit. So that should give you some idea of the quite enormous size of this number. It is a huge, huge number. But obviously, if our 
atoms, our molecules are, are really, really tiny. We can hold a mole in our hand. A mole of anything else is just unimaginably big. Okay, so hopefully that has clarified a few things about the mole. There's plenty more that I want to say about the mole, and so I'm going to be saying that in part two of this video. Uh, and so we will see you next time.